is Andre Guichard, collector, curator, co-owner of Gallery Guichard, here for Collector's Fingerprint number three, and with some of my favorite friends and collectors. How you guys doing? Awesome. Wonderful. Thanks. What's up, awesome. Stephanie and Brett? How are you guys? Oh, man. I tell you what, I, we've been looking forward to this since you mentioned it, I don't even know, a year and a half, two years ago, whatever. Um, and couldn't be more excited to honor you and really talk about the impact that y'all have had in our lives. And the art is a big part of it, but our relationship is even more so. So anyway, super excited. Thank you. Yes. And I'll have to say this is very humbling for me personally. And I know for Francis and I, we talk about this together. As much as we love doing art and creating art, one of our biggest joys are the people we meet, and you all are special friends for us. And I've learned a lot, and we learn a lot, spending time together, personally growing, but more importantly, how you approach art and collecting. So I'm gonna start with, how did you two start collecting? And individually, we'll start with you, Brett, sure. and then together. Well, I think, I think it goes a little, um, there's a preemptive part of it that goes before collecting art. Um, my mother was a singer and my dad was an OG, meaning that both of them together, they just did stuff that was against the curb and it just set an example of excellence for us, for all of our kids, you know? Um, everything from you know fighting racism back in the 60s and 70s moving into neighborhoods that black folks wasn't supposed to move in uh, gaining positions in uh, society that they could then push forward uh, our ability as African Americans to be successful in our own right and from that from that that thought process and that growth thought process was really just a commitment to excellence and what excellence looks like so as it comes to art, art is the expression of excellence from an individual that can create something that only they can see, but we look at and we're just like, oh my God, how did they do that? Like, where did that come from? How did they then take, you know, the, the paintbrush and put those colors to it and the texture to it and like, I would love to be able to do that, and if, if I know that I can't, then I'd love to just be a part of it somehow. And so collecting art was really a function of expressing our passion for excellence in all fields and being able to display that, not only for us to make not a house, but a home, but then to be able to have other people recognize that they could transcend what otherwise looks to be normal by just sharing something that is a one-of-a-kind piece that no one else could do that they're part of that journey of because they're having it in their home to have everybody else share with it so uh, we got started in it because of a great friend of mine Norman Teague who uh, introduced me to the Chicago uh, artist community in which I finally met y'all Back in 2005, six, we were talking about that a little bit before right. um, on how it unfolded, and uh, the rest is history. Beautiful. Wow, yes. I remember Norman, he built our benches at the gallery mm -hmm. into art of his own. That's right. What about you, Steph? Um, I think, you know, Brett definitely um, summed it up from a conversation of just excellence and really appreciating the wonderment and beauty that artists bring to our world. Um, I grew up in a family that were antiquers, right? So my mother and my father, um, it was pretty normal that every single weekend or at least every single vacation, we were finding beautiful things. And I think, as he mentioned, the people behind the pieces and the things is what makes it really special. And so it would be, you know, looking at something that was made in the 1500s or someone that chiseled this beautiful oak desk out of, you know, a few tools in the, you know, 1800s and thinking, who were they? How did they get that idea? And then as Brett um, also alluded to, brought it to life so that someone could not only, you know, 
be you know appreciative of but um, be able to of course use and then pass on and and, and lasting generations so um, it's been fun to continue that that's awesome and and that's what it's about you know building wealth and culture passing that on H how did you go about selecting your art and you know some people select because they are trying to fill a space or some people collect because they're they're feeling passionate about something how do you guys collect art hmm. um, well I can tell you this we are people of abundance so rarely is a, is a question a this way or that way oftentimes it's both or multiple ways right Sometimes we look for something to fill a space. Rarely, I think, rarely. The commission pieces, that would yeah, be the probably something for that. Yeah, the commission for sure. Yeah. Um, but it's a feeling, you know, it's, uh, it's something that resonates with you. You know, every piece that we have in here, there's, um, there's a story behind it on why it was so important to us, you know, whether it be uh, the first time I saw mixed media art, and I'm like, oh my God, man, I love the yeah, colors and the, patina and mm. everything that goes into that. I'm like, how, how does that even happen? Or into the colors that we're looking for or the feeling of sensuality or a vibrant, you know, let's have a party and, you know, just really kick it. Or the uh, serenity of music and what that can do to, you know, calming a hard and hectic day or really just lifting your spirits going, man, I'm ready to go out there and crush the world. So it's a, it's a feeling and it's something that really shows up. With Steph and I, what's interesting is I'll see something and she'll be like, yeah, no. I'm like, okay. <laughs> then she'll see something and I'll be like, uh, I don't know about that. But together we always come to the same agreement once we finally go through the process of purchasing art. And uh, so we're in alignment anytime we get something and it's fun as heck. Actually, it was one of my next questions what is the process because couples and i've said this in previous fingerprint interviews are often the hardest to sell to because one might like something the other but do you all have a process where if you like something then you'll give in or vice versa or do you both have to like it at a certain level before it can come into the house i'm just curious um, interesting because as Brett was sharing, there isn't one piece in this house that we both didn't love. Awesome. Yeah. Right? And so I think it is a, a feeling, mm. it's a vibe, and um, I think if we're ever going, do we like that or do you like that? We know it's not the one because if you have to ask, it's kind of like a partner. If you have to ask if you're with the right person <laughs> or could we make this work, it's usually no, right? <laughs> and so I think our art is that way. Um, every piece we have in here, we love. And actually it goes to um, when the process of purchasing or not and do we have a space for us, I can recall a time um, where we bought five pieces kind of out of nowhere and we ha didn't have the space for it But we knew we had to have the art and um, I'll never forget we, we had We had the nicest looking uh, You know powder room at our old, uh, you know residence that had this giant Oversized piece of art in there, but every person that would use that powder room would come out going Wow. <laughs> That's a powerful, right? So. Love it. Love it. I love it. I remember, you know, your your home, the previous home, and I remember how you had all of the artwork situated in places that really still stood out. And it was just amazing to be able to walk through and then to see it all on one level. Now you're on several yeah. levels. Yeah. So how do you think... Um, how do you curate your space? How do you make your space your home? Hmm. Well, um, you know, going back to how we, we do it as a couple, um, I think, and I know Steph's in agreement with it, you know, we're really blessed to, um, yeah, just love and respect each other enough that if it's good for her, then it's going to be good for me. If it's good for me, it's going to be good for her. From the whole you know, like curation of it, I remember when we were moving in here and, and we went through this whole renovation process and everything else, and we're like, okay, y'all coming over and you're giving us your best ideas on where you think pieces would go. 
And what ended up happening is uh, there was parts of that, but it was really just thinking about where you're at in the home, you know, uh, on the ground floor level, like what's the feeling that you want when you first come in? Because visually what you see is one of the first things that is going to trigger your thought on where you're at, the feeling, comfort level, um, experience of the home or whatever. And so we thought of it from that standpoint. Um, as you start going up, you know, in our we have a main floor that's uh, basically just our bedroom and closet and sitting area and everything else. That's really a, like a space of love and um, vibrancy and yeah, just joy. And then from there on the third level, it's, uh, it's the fun level. It's where everybody who comes here gets to stay and have their like own place, just like a hotel, you just call it Hotel Pinagar. <laughs> I love it. And that would be a seven star. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so up there, it's um, art is just fun. It, it's uh, colorful. It's, um, yeah, calming. It's, yeah. Hmm. One um, distinction, you, you know, we brought up our old residents and this residents. Um, they're very vanilla and white and beige. And um, really the only color we have here is our art. And we wanted it to be that way that the, the art makes the home, not, you know, the other way around. And so, um, you know, that's kind of how we view our house is, you know, our house is and kind of our own little art gallery of pieces we love. And, um, you know, we get to see in the rest, it all just blends in, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Brett and Stephanie, you all mentioned renovation earlier. Can you describe some of the parallels between renovating the house and commissioning a piece of artwork? Oh boy, yeah, in a, in a heartbeat. Um, we had a designer that we hired to assist us, right? Both of us have a really strong um, vision of what we want, however, we also know we're not the experts in what we want necessarily, right? Or and at so, all, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so as a result, we find people that we trust that can bring uh, vision to life uh, that we have input in, but we don't, we don't have a, and it better look like this. Because if we trust them and we meet them and we can see what they've done, then we're like, we're going to be able to work together to find something that's greater than anything that we could have individually. They could have come up with them themselves, or we could have come up with and said, this is how it should be. Because they're the experts, they're the artists, they're the ones who can create something that we can't imagine. And we have really nothing more than a strong idea of what we would like, but that's why we're trusting the artist, and this has happened with both of y'all, on creating something that um, speaks to us based on our relationship and based on your expertise. So, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. And I'm smiling and I'm, I don't want to interrupt you, Fran. I know you have something to say about how you just describing that took me back to the process of working with you all on a commission and still having the freedom to create and having been an artist of 30 years, I've felt different pressures during commission. So I thank you because not even knowing what that freedom does for an artist where it says, I trust and respect and appreciate your art, but I want you to go go for it. And I think that's something special to your process. So thank you. Right, they've commissioned several several of your pieces, yes, right? Yes, that's what I was, that right. was saying. And, and particularly the piece that's about relationships and it was your lines that was the inspiration and even though some of the ones you saw before were a full tree part of our process was just talking about the blessings because your abundance was more important in expressing so i just thought that was an example of how your process and the freedom in how you allow your artist to create is really special all right yeah oh my gosh 
Well, honestly, I, I think I will be cautious with my words. I think if you're going to ask somebody to do something and then you're going to direct how it has to be and what you want and here's what it should look like, then uh, you should do it yourself. Mm. But if you want to have something to be created and you have, an, uh, you have a great idea, then let them, let them create because that's what they do. That's what you do. That's what both of y'all do. And then from that, you collaborate, you work together. You start seeing, you're like, oh, wow, I love this. And we didn't direct the whole thing because it was just magic. The one thing we did say is, Andre, you better put your foot in this. <laughs> like, like, just, just like, let it, let it go, man. Let it fly yeah. and see what you can come up with. What yeah. do you think? Um, I was actually thinking very similar going, well, that would be really silly to try and direct what someone else sees when, you know, I think that's the beauty of life is in connection, right? Is getting to understand someone else's thought process, someone else's, you know, um, you know, background, their history, their love, their passion, and then the wonderment that that creates, you know, that only gets created by allowing and abundance um, versus, you know, forcing and directing and kind of this rigidity thing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think you're the experts and I think that's really the f one of my favorite parts I know um, in, you know, spending time with you all and coming to the gallery and getting to be around your art and your art friends um, is really getting to just sit in the kind of magnificence of creation. Yeah. You know, and like, I couldn't even imagine any of this in my head, um, like, or even close. And I'm always just mesmerized, um, no matter when I see the art that's on my own walls every day, or of course coming to the gallery and we love coming. <laughs> and then we're going, ooh, we're running out of room. But, um, you know, just, you know, you're just gonna fall in love, you know. There are two pieces that I, I mean, I love all of your artwork, but there are two pieces that I can talk about right now because we don't have enough time to really talk about all of the artwork and the pieces that I really love of your collection. I want to know a little bit about the piece that's under glass and then the two pieces that are in this room by Stephen Ololakin, the piece under glass by Andre Guichard and why and how you commissioned that one and then the two pieces by Stephen Ololakin. Why and how you commissioned those? You bet. Well, <clears throat> um, I know you can't see it from the video that's being taken right now, but right under here used to be a glass floor. Mm -hmm. And as we were going through the renovation process, um, our designer was like, close it up. Her name's Eva. <laughs> she said it and is so she, tacky to have a glass floor. Close Who it needs up. to look upstairs, you know? And I'm going, but it's a glass floor, like, you know? And she was right, of course. Right. So, um, so we closed it from the bottom. So. We did. We closed yeah. it from the bottom and we thought, wouldn't this be a fantastic place to have a statement for our home? And the best way to do that would be to have a one of a kind expression that you can't buy no matter where you go, right? And so we came to you and talked to you about it. We go, we have a place that's going to be like perfect. You just have to create it on this specific dimension and everything else. And then because, um, I mean, we really respect and love each other a lot. And so we're like, well, it would, it would be kind of something where we're together and then let's create it from there. So anyway, um, that was, yeah, one of the coolest things we've ever done. That's and cool. I know anybody who moves in here, they're going to have to take this wall down and when they get it, <laughs> well, the ceiling. Yeah. Because we're going to die here. So it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's definitely more than a statement. I mean, I remember having like the electricians work on it and having to put the lighting around it. And, you know, every, you know, crafts, um, craftsman and tradesman and um, tradesperson that came into the home would just look at it and go, oh my gosh, you know, and still everybody gets really worried to go stand on it. You know, we're like, it's fine. It's the floor. Um, but it's just so special to us. You know, it's two people coming together and um, sharing their life together, which we're so fortunate to do. And um, than being surrounded by all of life's blessings. And so it's kind of fun, you know, we have a daughter and 
um, a, an extended family that we're extremely close to. And so they all pick out their their, their roses or and say, that one's mine and that one's me. And um, it really, uh, and then of course it's in our, um, you know, primary sitting room. So it's in our area. So um, you just feel the love. We have our vows over it. It's yeah. kind of cheesy that way wow. too, but. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then these oh, from Shio, yeah, right? Um, we went to your gallery and saw some of the work that he had and then a picture of <laughs> uh, some art that he had yeah. done at your daughter's wedding. Oh, at the wedding. Yeah, yeah, at the wedding. And Steph's like, we need something like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, like what? And she shows it to me. I'm like, oh, okay. And we contact you. You're like, oh, that's Shio. And we're like, oh, good. Like, you know him and, and we can actually do something uh, there. We had, when you first walk in the door, these are the first two pieces that you see when you look straight ahead outside of yours when you look to the right. And um, we wanted something that that was indicative of uh, unity and home and family and togetherness and beautiful, right? Um, yeah. And so Jaya, he put his foot in it, right? He, 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 he dug in. And he created something that was, um, yeah, just majestic and beautiful. And we love the colors and we love the dimension and the texture and uh, just everything on how he had, he's put it together. Um, and he's a cool as heck person because we met him before he actually did this. And so if had that not been mm -hmm. successful, then it wouldn't have been something that we would have moved forward with because you need that connection to be able to, to translate uh, your feeling of somebody else or a something else effectively um, just due to you understanding what they want and what you can bring to the table. Absolutely, that was special. Yeah. You know, getting to meet him, having him, um, I remember he came to dinner and you guys came over and it was so wonderful for him to actually see the space, sit in the space, kind of ask us a couple questions, um, you know, ask us about some colors, some different, you know, parts like that. But other than that, we said, just do your thing. And um, I think maybe that night, it was kind of crazy. That night he had sent us a sketch and was like, what do you think of this? And we're going, already? Like, <laughs> you know, um, but he's just a mastermind. I mean, I'm always in awe of his art and the different medias that he does. And like you two, um, just so talented. And so it was really great to put the person, you know, in with the art. So, you know, our family got to meet him when he came and installed it. I mean, like, he was at our birthday party, like, you know, so when I see the art, I mean, of course, I, I know what it means to us, um, but I also see him, you know, and he's this remarkable human um, that has his past and history in that as well. So it's really cool. That's great. It's great chemistry, too, between the artist mm -hmm. and the collector. I love it. And like he felt you. I have one more question and I'll let Fran have the next, but I was wondering, how did you know how to tightrope that difficult balance of needing decoration assistance, but still knowing the type of art that spoke to you and that is the fingerprint that we feel now, that you know, I feel love, I feel family, I feel all those things that I know about you as a person, because I'm your friend, but if I was just here, I feel the same things. So how did you know that this makes a different statement and you're able to understand getting decoration advice but still having an original works that speak to you? I'll go. I almost yeah. I almost cringe when I hear decoration, right? <laughs> um, and, and not because of your word usage, but because um, our original art is so much more than decor. You know, I feel like decor is kind of like you put it into Wayfair or on, you know, Horchow or, you know, and you search it, or, you know, Overstock or something and decor pops up and um, everything we, <laughs> PJ Mac, um, right? and everything we have in our house, like I had shared previously, like we love. And so we kind of have this thing that if it doesn't speak to us and that's anything that we're into in life, we don't do it. Um, and so 
the art, we knew that we wanted something special. We knew we had some special pieces already. And when you have a couple special pieces, it's really hard to put anything other than more beautiful, you know, uh, remarkable pieces. That's yeah. what I would say. Well, it goes back to the excellence, you know, conversation. Like, anybody watching this, literally, if y'all don't already know, like, it doesn't get any better than Andre and Francis, right? And the, the, the gallery is like, well, we've been to all sorts of galleries. And sometimes we'll go into other galleries and we just think, are they saving the, the good stuff for like <laughs> someone right? else? Like but truth, that's truth. You connect, you connect the dots. You connect the dots with a whole world of people who can do things that you can't. They do it in a different way. They do it in a different style. They do it in a different medium. And you connect it and pull it all together through your, uh, your gallery and through all the artists that are part of it that come and then some go and then some come and you keep developing them and everything else. And from that standpoint, uh, we're able to then, how do I put it? We're able to then honor what you bring to the earth, to the world, to humanity, to then be able to have that not only in our home, but to celebrate all these artists that, my goodness, man, anybody that can take the time to really see something and bring it to fruition just from their mind's eye, those are the ones that we celebrate for eternity. I mean, you go back as far as you want to and all the great artists and sculptors and everything else and by any name that you want to throw out there, uh, we're still honoring what they could do that no one else could. And y'all bring it all together so that we get to enjoy it. Because we have every every piece of art that we have in here, with the exception of a few, mm -hmm. and I don't even know how many we have total, are all through you. So thank, thank you, you thank for you. your commitment right. to all of us. <laughs> thank and, you. And you know, absolutely. and thank you guys for today. Are you going to say something else, no, Stephanie? I just, absolutely. Like, thank you guys for being who you are, you know, and creating this just fabulous gallery and just, you know, workspace down in Bronzeville for the, you know, Chicagoland community, for the world. Um, I've never seen anything like it, you know, and just thank you. Well, we appreciate that. Thank you. And, and I have to say, we appreciate the conversation here today. You guys have said so many amazing things that will help a, the next collector or the person who's collecting now to be able to say, yeah, I'm doing it right. I'm having fun. To, what? Give me something that you want to say. One last thing that you might say to a collector that you think they should know. Ooh, I know a big one. Um, before I started collecting, one of the, the, the things that stopped me uh, from just running into it is cost. I thought, man, I can't afford that. And then when you start understanding value and you start understanding um, legacy and you just look in your own history, the things that you honor and love the most are things that are attached to your mother or your father or your grandparents. And then they die and they pass it on to your kids and then you pass it on to your kids. Like that is priceless. So you wanna do whatever it takes in order to honor that at whatever level that you can afford, right? Stretch it a little bit because it's going to be worth so much more than the money that you're sharing at that time for any piece of art that you get because it's going to be something that's going to go for generations that your family and your kids and your kids' kids and your kids' kids' kids and mm -hmm. so forth are going to be like, that's great, great, great grandpa, great, great, great grandma, you know, whatever their name is and the artists, oh my gosh, and they did, like it's something that it's worth doing whatever it takes to be able to have it, even if it's only one piece, and no matter what it takes, because it will change their uh, self-confidence, it will change their belief on what's possible, it will change their ability to look at something that's a one of a kind versus that every Tom, Dick, and Harry has, and everything that can get off a of chow or anything else, it's worth everything that it takes to really stretch and then to be able to have that be an expression of not only you, but your family, your legacy, and humanity. So 
Yeah. That, wow. That Love thing. that. Yes. This is priceless. This is really the real thing. And it's firsthand. It's everything we talk about, passing on wealth and culture, art that speaks to you, real art versus decoration. Stories. Take the story behind the art. The relationships. The relationships with the artists. I mean, this is worth gold and all I can say is thank you, thank you, thank you for your support, for your friendship and for sharing today with what it means to live with original art. See you next time. Thank you again for joining us here at Collector's Fingerprint number three and I of course want to thank our host for sharing so much valuable information. It's amazing. Amazing and we'll see you next time virtual exhibit catalog number 31 from Dallas, Texas. Amazing Southern Flair. And don't forget many of the artists that you see today you can find in our virtual exhibit catalogs 1 through 30. See art, love art, buy art, live with the original art. See you next time. And don't forget to check us out at www.gallerygichard.com. Take a ride in the virtual exhibit catalog. It's as easy as one, two, three. Take out your cell phone and drop right in and explore this amazing exhibit. And don't forget to touch the matter tags so you can see the title, medium, price, and size of all of these amazing paintings